Well, so uh, in uh, part three of chapter four, uh, we want to discuss uh, uh, the describing network externalities and obtaining empiric uh, empirical information about demand. So we want to discuss that what is the impact of networking externality? Like uh, we discussed many things that is going to affect the demand, but now we want to see is there, uh, and especially in, in a modern world where uh, the social media and all these things, uh, we can give an example that the demand is increased because of an ex externality, like uh, because of the peer pressure, because of the, the, the people are using and you need to uh, use that product in order to connect with them. So this type of uh, uh, impact we're going to see uh, for and we we call it as a network externality. And we also notice in uh, this uh, in case of uh, many products uh, like whenever uh, the software development, uh, development uh, firms or app development firms, they try uh, to introduce a new version, but they make it uh, sure that this new version is compatible with the old version. Uh, why? Because they don't want to uh, lose the uh, network uh, externality for their product. Uh, <clears throat> so let's see uh, what is network externality. So when each individual's demand depends on the purchase of other individuals, that's a network. That's what I said, the peer pressure or the connectivity. That's a reason for uh, uh, increasing the demand for a product or uh, why the people are buying that product more. A positive network externality exists if the quantity of good demanded by a typical consumer increases in response to the growth of uh, growth in purchase of other consumers if the quantity demanded decrease uh, there is a negative ex network externality uh, positive ne uh, network externality or we also use the word uh, bandwagon effect means that the everyone wants to uh, enter into the same wagon uh, positive network externality in which a consumer wishes to possess a good uh, uh, in, in part because others do so here we can see that uh, the demand curve for 20 users uh, is D20, then we have a 40 users, then we have a 60 users, 80 users and 100 users. Uh, so, but if you look at the individual demand, the demand is uh, uh, changing uh, with a certain quantity like 2 to, but the overall demand is increasing more than that quantity. So when a positive network externality, the quant the quantity of a goods that an individual demand grows in response to the growth of purchases by other. So here, are, uh, here as the price of the product falls from uh, 30 to 20, the bandwagon effect caused the demand for the goods to shift to the right from D40 uh, to D80. So we see here the price uh, decrease from 30 to 20. So if, for example, these are the 20, uh, the, the, for example, right now, if it is using by 40 people, or we can call it as a D40. In actual, the demand should increase from this point to this point, and that's an increase, and that's a pure increase due to the price. But in actual, we see that this dark blue line is a market demand curve. Uh, the demand uh, with the decrease in the price from 30 to 2, the demand is increased from this point to this point. So this uh, this eight increase uh, number of uh, uh, users uh, increase uh, from 40 to 48 uh, is because of the pure price. But when it is increased from 40 to 80, that increase uh, 48 to 80, that increase is due to the bandwagon effect or uh, positive network externalities. Uh, ne negative network externality is also possible and we observe this especially in products which are which has a snobbish effect uh, snobbish means that the some firms develop uh, the products in such a way that they convince the users or the buyer that this is the product specially designed for a very few people and you are one of the, those few people that you are having this product so that's what we call it as a snobbish effect. The snob effect is a negative network externality because if they are making uh, in bulk uh, uh, the special uh, customers and especially in, in the field of uh, 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 media or uh, film industry, uh, you can say that uh, celebrities, uh, they are using uh, whether they are sports celebrity or a, or a 
media celebrity uh, they all uh, having a such snobbish uh, reason for buying things which are available only very limited quantity everyone is not using it everyone is not capable of buying it and you can observe this very uh, often that if you go to a very high brand or a high-end brand uh, shops and you find many products which are not very common and they have a very uh, weird type of designs but the prices are exceptionally very high uh, those products are only for those people who are uh, of a snobbish or they have a negative uh, networking externality so the snow effect is a negative network externality in which the quantity of goods that an individual demand falls in response to the growth of purchase by others here as the price falls from 30 to 15 and more people buy the good the snow effect caused the demand for the good to shift to the uh, left from d2 uh, d6 to d2 uh, uh, the example uh, the book is quoting but you can apply this uh, example to any social media uh, platform like a uh, facebook instagram uh, or tutor whatever um, not the tutor now but x uh, or any other uh, social by early 2011 with over 600 million users facebook become the world's second most website uh, after google a strong positive network externalities was uh, because you know uh, like instagram or uh, uh, or uh, or x uh, people exchange these and they follow each other uh, so this is the way to connectivity uh, and it is very weird and if someone asks you okay what is your twitter handle uh, or x handle or what is your uh, instagram um, so uh, because of that their network has a creating a positive impact on the demands of these social medias so network externalities uh, you know everyone has now a uh, app of a uh, uh, whatsapp now why because there's so much use that one uh, if if one is not want to do this then is going to be excluded from that network so this uh, that's the reason that there is a need for these type of things. So uh, that's a, a one topic we want to discuss in, our, in this part is uh, network uh, externality. It can be a positive, it can be a negative. Uh, the second point what we want to discuss is how we can estimate the demand curve. So, uh, so far uh, in, in, in all the chapters, whenever we quote a, a demand curve, so we write a equation and say that this is the demand curve. Uh, so, uh, it, now the the question is how do we get these numbers like i showed you uh, numbers uh, for a, a domestic demands of wheat uh, and then export demand for wheat uh, from where we get these numbers randomly selecting numbers no there is a way to calculate these numbers and normally these uh, numbers are uh, calculated from a uh, analysis of an uh, empirical data uh, now empirical data means the previous historical data that going to give us the idea that uh, by uh, by running some statistical uh, analysis uh, one of the is a regression analysis in which we run and we, we get the coefficients and these coefficients what we discuss constant and coefficients that explains the reason so here is a uh, data like in 2004 uh, this is the quantity this is the price uh, and this is the income level so when we ch see that uh, the quantity is changing as the price is decreasing and as the income is increasing so we can write it that the quantity is equal to uh, this is a journal equation uh, a as a constant or y intercept minus bp b is the slope of the price curve or a demand curve and then c as a, 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 a coefficient or a slope of a uh, on this uh, income curve so when uh, using this data uh, using the data the table and run a least square method and what we call it as a, uh, a, re a regression analysis uh, uh, and this is a very specific method for a, running a regression analysis and that method is called as a least square method the demand relationship we get it the coefficients along so quantity which is a dependent variable is uh, going to be changed uh, if the price is changed by one, uh, so the, commodity, uh, the the demand is reduced by 0.49, right? And if the income increase, the demand is increased by uh, 0.81. And this is the constant. So it means that if the income and the price is zero, even then this is the demand existing. So that's explained by this. Uh, 
so price and elasticity demand can uh, used to determine the form of a demand relationship but the same data could describe a single demand curve d on three different demand curves d1 d2 d3 uh, that shifts over time so we can calculate uh, the uh, the different demand curves and overall the demand curve over the period as well uh, like so uh, what are these uh, elasticities or these uh, parameters or coefficients going to explain so the price elasticity q is equal to a minus bp uh, and if we want to find out the elasticity uh, which is delta q over delta p into p over q uh, so we get it minus b into p this minus b is basically this portion right and uh, so we often find it useful to work with the isoelastic demand curve in which the price elasticity and the income elasticities are constant uh, when written in its log linear form we can write write it in a log linear form and we specifically with the log linear form we call it as an isoelastic demand curve appears as follows so log of qu quantity that's a dependent variable is alpha minus beta log of p uh, plus c log of i so these gives us a percentage changes uh, these uh, these coefficients a is a constant but minus b is a percentage change or elasticity of uh, price elasticity of uh, this uh, product and this is going to give us a income elasticity so so suppose that p2 represents the price of a second good one which is believed to be the related to the product so we can add up further variables in this uh, analysis as well and we add up here p2 p2 is the price of a related good it can be a substitute it can be a, a complement or it can be any <clears throat> if we get this value as a coefficient as a zero so we can say that uh, it is independent so there is no relationship so when b2 the cross price elasticity is positive the two goods are substitute when b2 is negative the two goods are complement and if b2 is zero then we can say that these two comp uh, these two products are independent they have no relationship so here is a real example and uh, after running a regression for these uh, serials uh, we get these coefficients and we're going to explain these coefficients here the acquisition of shred wheat cereal of uh, nabisco by the uh, post cereal raised the question of whether post would raise the price of a grape nuts or the price of a nabisco shredded wheat spoon size so these are the two different products and the third uh, the firm is buying a uh, uh, or acquiring uh, the other product and um, the uh, researcher wants to see after uh, acquiring or after uh, taking over that product uh, will the uh, company is going to increase the price uh, raise the price of another product which is grape nut or the price of a nebresco so acquisition of a shredded wheat cereal of Nebes, uh, uh, cereal of Nebesco. Uh, one important issue was whether the two brands uh, were close substitutes for one another. If so, it would be more profitable for Post to increase the price of a grape nut arts after rather than before the acquisition uh, because the lo uh, loss sales from consumers who swift, uh, switch uh, away from uh, grape nuts would be recovered to the extent they switch to the substitute product because both products are now with the same company. The sustainability of the grape nuts and shredded wheat can be measured by the cross price elasticity of a grape uh, a demand for grape nuts with respect to the price of shredded ones. So one isoelastic demand equation appears in the uh, following long linear uh, form. So log of the uh, grape nut, this is GN grape nuts. Uh, is 1.998 that's a constant minus 2.056 log of grape uh, grape nut so this is the if the price of the product is increased the demand is reduced by if one unit of, of the price is increased so the the demand is decreased by 2.085 units uh, the income effect is here as a positive like if the uh, income increase uh, the demand is increased going to be increased by 0 0.62 uh, the shredded wheat this is the third product and when we uh, put this into the equation as well so we see here as a positive sign so the demand for grape nut is elastic because it's a value is more than one 
with a price elasticity of about minus 2. Income elasticity is 0.62. It is inelastic income because the value is less than 1. Uh, the cross price elasticity is 0 0.1. The two serials are not very close substitute. Right? We just discussed that if this is a positive, if the cross price elasticity is positive, the two goods are substitute. So we find it that these are the values is positive 0 0.1, but it's very low, it's less than one. So we can say that uh, these are substitute, but not very close to each other. Uh, there is another way that we can estimate uh, the demand is interview and experimental approach to demand determination. But these are not so useful because uh, uh, we know uh, from psychological point of view, when uh, when we ask questions in an interview regarding the demand, uh, the responder the responder is going to give us a, a not the actual answers uh, because he is in the uh, uh, pressure of a interview type situation. So another way to obtain information about demand is through interview in direct market experiment an airline might offer a reduced price to learn how the price change affects demand and how competitors will respond uh, a serial company might test a new brand with the coupons that reveal the shape of the underlying demand curve a potential problem with the experiments and interview is the wrong experiment can be costly uh, other factors can change at the same time as the experiment short-lived responses may differ from a permanent change a firm can afford to uh, can afford to try only a limited number of experiments because you cannot change the price every day and calculate what is the impact so by this way you annoyed your uh, customers so uh, this is all what we want to discuss uh, in our part three uh, now we are going to discuss part four part four is basically the appendix of chapter uh, four and in which we discuss the mathematical uh, uh, solution for finding out the um, impact uh, or we can say maximization let's see uh, okay so see you in a part four